time has not been kind to Die Another Day. It's often held up as an example of one of the weaker Bond films, driven by excess and taking everything to the absolute limit, even if that means jumping the shark. And certainly it does feature some of the sillier gadgets. It has larger than life performances by its central villains. And I think you can fairly argue there are a fair few cheesy moments in there as well. But I think it's always important to remember that this film was meant to be a celebration of 40 years of James Bond. This was the 20th film in the series at that point. And in a way, part of its remit was to take everything up a level, take it to the furthest extreme they possibly could, in order to mark and celebrate the franchise as a whole. And it's important to remember that the film was a massive commercial hit, and it was by no means a failure in the way that history has remembered it. But at the same time, it is important to note that this film marks something of a watershed moment for the franchise. After Die Another Day, they would of course radically change direction. They would have cast a new Bond and there'd be a completely different tone and feeling for Bond films for the next 15 years. And one of the casualties of this change in direction would be the character of Jinx, played by Halle Berry, because this character was introduced with the intent to spin off into a sub-franchise, a supporting franchise to go alongside James Bond. Of course, what that would have looked like, how it would have worked, how it would have been received, we will never know. But today I thought it might be fun to take a look at the only 1-6 scale figure ever produced of Jinx, made of course by Sideshow Collectibles. So those who are familiar with the Bond figures released by Sideshow Collectibles will know that they have a gatefold cover, and on the cover they usually choose a poster from the films to go on the front of the box. Now, fortunately enough, for Die Another Day, they did produce individual character posters, which works appropriately enough. Of course, we have Jinx here. And as ever, this looks really very nice, very presentable. You can put this on display and it looks fantastic. Now, digressing slightly, I've never really understood this poster because, of course, it has Jinx in a blue outfit when, of course, we know that it's red. Now, I'm guessing they wanted to keep the blue theme across all of their uh, film posters for Die Another Day to keep in with the, the ice theme, I suppose. Uh, but nevertheless, it does look a little bit jarring when you open up the gatefold and, of course, she's in a, a red outfit. But nevertheless, this looks fantastic and I really like it. On the side panel, we have the title of the film. We have a photo of the figure itself within the gun barrel that is so synonymous with James Bond. And this time it's in a sort of silver uh, colouring rather than being the traditional red or blue that's usually used on these figures. And uh, this looks, again, very, very nice. You can put these next to the other figures in the line. They stack very nicely on the shelf. And of course, each one is specific to that character. So this is a quite nice way of displaying your collection if you want to have them all on show at once. On the reverse, we have another photo of the figure there, but we also have some shots from throughout the film, and there's a fairly lengthy bio about Halle Berry and the character of Jinx. And when we open up that gatefold cover there, on the left-hand side, we have uh, information about the film, a uh, brief synopsis there, and we have the full cast list, which is a nice touch. Some of the surrounding artwork is taken from the title sequence, uh, so keeping with the theme, looks very, very nice, very presentable. And of course, on the right-hand side, we have that fantastic window display showing the character and the various accessories. So, first impressions liberating the figure from the packaging is that this figure certainly looks the part, and the tailoring on the figure looks to have been very, very nicely, very carefully done, which is fantastic. Now, the critical test for me with Sideshow Collectibles from this time is the head sculpt, as for me, this will usually make or break my final impression of the figure. Now, at first glance, I thought they'd done a pretty solid job of the likeness, but looking at it closer and comparing it with photographs of Halle Berry from the film, I'm not sure they've quite nailed it. Now, it's certainly not a disaster. I've definitely seen much worse in this series, but I've also seen a lot better as well. I certainly think that the head sculpt is close. There's definitely a very strong likeness, but I wouldn't say it's exact. I think if we look at Halle Berry's features, there are a lot more aquiline than we have in this figure, particularly in the upper cheekbones around the eye area. They seem to, uh, the face seems to be a little bit too wide on this sculpt. Also, the paint apps look a little bit sloppy. There's a little bit of smudging here and there, most noticeably around the eyeliner at the top of the eye there. And in the hair itself, I think they could have benefited from an extra wash running through just to uh, enhance some of the highlights. Uh, as it is, it just seems to be one matte colour, which is fine, but it just it lacks a little bit of texture, I think. 
Now, in terms of the body sculpt, it is the standard female body sculpt that was used for most of Sideshow's figures at this time, so if you've owned one of them before, you will know roughly what to expect, but needless to say, it is a fairly generic shape and size, but I think this works perfectly well for Jinx. This looks pretty authentic and pretty decent. I think, as I said, the tailoring is probably the standout. This looks very nice. It looks very authentic. It has that uh, leather effect kind of material that's been used uh, when you touch it. It has a quite a nice texture to it, and uh, all in all, looks very striking and as I said, very authentic to what we see in the film. Now there is a caveat to this material in terms of it flaking uh, and becoming a bit worn over time and I'll touch on that a little bit more in a moment. But for now I'll also mention the belt. The belt is one single uh, rubber piece uh, and that buckle there is painted in. So uh, it looks a little bit more uh, simple in terms of its design than we're used to. Uh, it's, there's no actual uh, metal pieces used for example on the belt which would have been nice to see. Uh, but nevertheless uh, it still looks the part. It still looks pretty decent. Now, as I mentioned, this faux leather material feels very nice, it looks very nice, but over time uh, it does wear away and you can see these cracks forming in it. So uh, this is particularly noticeable whenever you try to pose the figure. It will crease the material and produce these little cracks which become more visible at the more pressure and strain is on them, as you can see here. Mostly, when you stretch the material out, they do disappear, but some will remain. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on and be aware of. Both of her hands are sculpted in gloves. Sadly, there are no swappable hands, so we are stuck with just these two. They are both gloved, and they are both mm, sort of gripping hands. They're slightly open, but not quite closed, so sadly no fists or non-gloved hands. And at the bottom, she has these rubber boots. Now, these look fine, they're sculpted nicely, they certainly do the job, but obviously, by today's standards, this does look a little bit simplistic. It does feel a little bit out of date. But that being said, the leather trousers do tuck into them very nicely and it does look pretty neat and smart. And in articulation, I'm pleased to say that she enjoys all the same articulation as her male counterparts, which is fantastic. Sometimes with female forms, they tend to suffer, they don't get quite as much articulation because the joints are thinner, smaller, and they tend to snap. But that is not the case here. So she does have a ball jointed head. She can spin her head from side to side. She can look up and down a little bit as well. And this is uh, pretty good. Uh, she does have these fantastic ball joint in her shoulders so she can uh, send her arms all the way back there in, in a butterfly motion which is fantastic. She can lift her arms right the way up and out to the side which is great. Now this is supported by an upper bicep swivel so of course she can rotate that upper arm uh, right the way around as well which is fantastic. There is a double jointed elbow so she can lean her hand right back to touch her hair if she wants which is fantastic. There is a swivel in the lower arm just before the wrist and then there's another swivel at the wrist which is actually a pin swivel which allows the hand to hinge forwards and backwards as well. She also has a ball joint in the upper abdomen in the chest area so she can lean from side to side, she can move from side to side and she can also lean forwards and backwards as well. This is then complemented by another ball joint in the waist area, which again, has all the same articulation. It will allow her to spin from side to side. It will allow her to move forwards and backwards and lean from left to right. So really complements the articulation in the chest and provides plenty of opportunity for dynamic posing. She also has hinges in the hips, so she can kick her legs out to the side a really healthy distance. She's also got an upper thigh swivel there as well, which is great. She can also kick her legs all the way forward. She can kick them all the way back, which is fantastic. And then there is a double jointed knee, meaning she can kick her lower legs right the way back there, which is fantastic. Now, there is articulation. There is a swivel at the ankle, and there is also a hinge in the foot there. Uh, so it can rotate, but again, the, the rubber of the boot is definitely going to hinder the articulation in this area. Now, for accessories, she comes with her pistol with silencer and six throwing knives. In that sense, and given the fact, of course, that we weren't given any extra hands, it, she does feel a little bit light on accessories. It would have been nice if they included a bit more, and usually the Bond figures do have a whole ton of accessories that come with these figures, so a little bit light here. Uh, she does also come with her display stand, of course. The pistol is very nicely painted, it's nice bright metallic silver. The barrel of the silencer does unscrew and you can pop it in or pop it out depending on uh, what effect you want to create. And there is a nice uh, paint application on the grip of the gun there and the handle, we see that brown which is nicely done. Now sadly, the clip isn't removable though. 
And although she grips the gun quite securely in her right hand, the trigger finger isn't quite long enough. Now you can just about get it onto the trigger, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't look quite right. Like you definitely have to stretch it to get it there. And it doesn't look quite natural if you're looking at it up close like this. I think the scaling of the pistol is just fractionally too large uh, for her grip and for her size. But nevertheless, from a distance, I think this still looks pretty cool. Now, of course, her knife belt has been sculpted to be able to hold the knives, which is quite a nice touch. So you can slot each of the six knives into the six spaces on the belt there. And I have to say, once they're in there, they look pretty cool. I really like the contrast of the silver against the black. It looks pretty decent and uh, makes the figure look a bit more visually interesting, a bit more striking, which is cool. And speaking of the knives, there's definitely some issues here in terms of her being able to hold them. So I was able to slot one into the grip of her right hand uh, between the fingers. It doesn't look quite natural, but uh, at least she can hold them. However, on the left hand, uh, there's absolutely no way she can grip these blades. They are very small, very thin pieces, and they would require a much tighter grip to be able to hold them. So uh, you are quite limited for posing it with the knives. So overall, I certainly have mixed feelings with this figure. I think the likeness is serviceable. I think it does a pretty decent job. It could be tweaked to be better, but it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. And that helps the figure tremendously. I think the body type and sculpt they've gone for works perfectly well. I do think the tailoring on the figure is very, very nicely done. Although again, with time, there's definitely some issues with that material cracking and not looking all it could be. However, I think at the time release, this is a really solid choice and it looked very striking and, and had a very nice texture to it. Now, I definitely think there's uh, some weaknesses when it comes to accessories. A, we don't have a lot of them. And B, uh, there's definitely issues in her being able to hold her pistol authentically the way we'd want her to hold it uh, with her finger on the trigger looking natural and then being able to hold the, the throwing knives doesn't really work for me in truth but all that being said I still think this is a really welcome addition to the line it's really fun uh, to have a Jinx figure uh, knowing what might have been and uh, I, as I said I think you know definitely a welcome addition to this collection. If you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.